morning, everyone. Let's get started. Um, on Monday, uh, today is the Wednesday, right? So only two days ago, we started talking about extended quantum computer. I think I was uh, pretty much in a rush at the end of the last lecture. And uh, several students asked me a few questions about the derivation of extended common future. Uh, I think most of the question is concerned with the fact that I didn't linearize about you, the uh, control. I only did linearization for the state. OK. Um, we can do linearization about the U, but I don't think that's necessary. And let's, uh, let me explain why that's not necessary. OK, uh, last time I think this is not equal to that, right? That's the reason we need the linearization for X. If you look at the uh, linear formula for so, so common future or extended common future both involve two steps. Okay, one is the uh, prediction step. The other one is the measurement update. So the prediction step, you can see, uh, let, let's look at the other more. Let's just look at this loop. All right. So that's all about common future. All the formulas are here. All right. So my question is that, we often, I mean, we assume throughout the semester for a linear system, and in the, the linear system is of the form AX plus BU, right? And in common future, we add some noise. So that's a linear system is linear in both control and state, right? It's linear in X and also linear in U. That's our assumption throughout this semester. But for common future, I don't think we need a linear assumption for control. For example, uh, let's say example, suppose my system is AXK plus, let's, for simplicity, let's assume, <laughs> let's consider scalar case, okay? Let's say UK squared. Can we use common filter? Let's say, uh, of course, we have, uh, we have noise. And the measurement is the same thing. Let's say we have CXK plus uh, E to the UK plus VK. Suppose this is our system. And uh, do you know how to do? Can you use, still use common future? Yeah. What's the, you, you look at the formula, OK. What's the role it plays for the control? Control is deterministic. It doesn't matter what it is. You always subtract it out or plug it in to help you to predict. And the way, I mean, so first of all, the question I'm going to ask is X and the YK are still Gaussian in this nonlinear, linear in state, but nonlinear in control case. I'm asking you, is this XK, let's say XK is Gaussian. WK is uh, independent, also Gaussian noise, and the VK, all the uh, noise assumptions are still kind of assumed. Uh, but it's just the difference is that UK, instead of uh, some number times UK, I have a nonlinear function of UK, and it's UK squared. Okay, UK is a deterministic. Okay, so I ask you, is this XK plus one still Gaussian? Yes, right? It's a linear mapping or function of uh, a Gaussian. This kind of deterministic number doesn't affect its uh, distribution. Uh, it's a fact the mean, but it doesn't affect whether it's Gaussian or not. You see what I mean? Okay? So it's still Gaussian. So the linearity is, is trying to make sure that all the state and uh, uh, output are jointly Gaussian, but that's true for it, as long as A and C are, I mean, sorry, the, the system is linear in state, and we don't require it to be linear in control. I'm not sure whether that explains it. Uh, I can further assume. So this is equivalent. I can write it like I let uh, 
Um, in this case, it's, uh, let's say I would like u tilde k equal to a vector, let's say uk squared and e to the uk. Okay, I define this u tilde k. It's still deterministic, right? Because you know UK, UK is deterministic and the function of deterministic variable is still deterministic. And this UK tilde is deterministic. And uh, I don't have space, okay? <laughs> Let me do this jump here, sorry. Uh, so in this case, I will say my system will be equivalent, can be equivalently written as A X K plus one zero UK tutor, okay, uh, plus noise, and the YK is CXK plus zero one UK tutor plus VK. Are you with me? I can do whatever transformation I want for deterministic input. Okay, it's still deterministic. So once you know UK, you can compute UK tutor. So UK tutor can be viewed as a artificial input to the system. And now you transform the nonlinear in control case system to a linear case that we are dealing with, right? And you can apply exactly the comma future formula we gave you here. Okay, so you can imagine this nonlinear function can be arbitrarily complex as long as it only involves control because control is deterministic. Then it doesn't affect the nature of the state. The state is still Gaussian and also Y. Any questions? So this is the fundamental reason that I didn't linearize about you because I can live whatever linearity there. Uh, it doesn't affect my um, so, so you can see, I put whatever I, uh, deterministic at that time k as UK tutor and that changes to the uh, linear case, okay? So that's the reason. Hopefully that uh, answers your questions. Any further questions? Okay, let's, uh, I think everything is not hard. It's just you need to linearize about the uh, uh, state, okay? Linearize the state around the best estimate of the state at that time. And then you evolve your future. Okay, so I think the best way to learn it is look at uh, examples. Let's go back to our localization example. That's a toy example, uh, but also give you uh, somehow a perspective about how the system, how common feature can be used. We have, we have done this example in the nonlinear, what, nonlinear least square case, right? You can use nonlinear least square to estimate the location of a vehicle. Let's say my car or robot is here. And uh, so in the environment, I have a map, okay? That means I have some kind of uh, markers with known positions. Here I call the beacons, all right? So I can only know the distance. Any given time, I have a measurement. And my measurement is the distance between the robot and the corresponding beacon. Okay, I have, if I have four beacons, I have four measurement. And uh, that full number tells me how far I'm away from each beacon and plus some noise. Okay, and I'll call this uh, PK, right? PK is the position or robot location at time K. So my question is that how do I use my measurement and to uh, estimate my position? 
So the question is, the goal is to find the best estimate my location given the measurement this. Of course, something is known is the position for the beacons are known. Uh, any questions? OK. <laughs> the nonlinear least square case that we kind of uh, studied or, or learned for lecture three, I think, right? And that's for instantaneous. Every time that I do a new kind of estimate based on one shot, one shot measurement. So k times, uh, let's say time, current time is k, I only use the measurement at k steps. I didn't kind of consider all the measurement history, right? And the common future allows us to do the best estimate of this position given all the measurement up to time k, and it's optimal in the stochastic sense. Okay, how do we start? Is this a common future problem? Okay, if you, in real life, you will not see a common future, uh, your problem, uh, you, you will not be given a problem that tells you A, B, C, D, uh, uh, noise, what, and then ask you to do exercise. That only happens in the exams or in the lectures. Okay, in real life, you're given a concrete problem like this. I want to know the position of this. And you need to know how to connect uh, the, the, the application to the fundamental nature of the problem. The fundamental nature of the problem is what? It's trying to estimate something you don't directly measure. You don't directly measure the location, okay? You measure a few things. You want to use those measurements to estimate the hidden variable, pk, okay? That can be done in the deterministic case of this square problem. But in the stochastic case, that's a estimation problem. If the estimation problem involves kind of a sequential correlated measurement, then that's a comma filtering problem. All right, that can be viewed as a comma filtering problem. Okay, so let's, uh, let's see how we can, uh, what's the system model in this case? It's up to you, by the way. As I mentioned at the very beginning, all models are wrong, right? Some are useful, and what's your best guess about the system model? Or what's the assumption you want to impose to help you understand, uh, to better estimate the position? Typically for tracking, let's say, if you don't know how the people drive your car, drive his car, or how the robot is going to move, and a commonly adopted assumption could be, could be, okay, there could be others, could be constant velocity. It doesn't mean the car has to travel at constant velocity. It just means it's within a few time steps, its velocity doesn't change that much. Okay, if that's the case, then you can somehow impose this assumption. So our assumption here is model assumption. It's a constant velocity, constant speed assumption. What do I mean by that? So velocity, so p position dot equal to constant. Is this a linear system? Well, you don't know, right? I mean, let's see. I mean, what does this mean? This means, uh, let's call it, uh, this velocity is given, right? It's called s, and this is in R2, velocity in the, on the plane, okay? It's R2, this is a given constant. Oh, no, not given, but unknown, sorry. I just know it doesn't change over time. Okay. And then I can take another derivative that tells me the acceleration is zero. Let's have more information. This is superficial or artificially imposed assumption to help you to make sure your estimate can help your estimates if your measurement is pretty noisy. Okay, so let's define our system dynamics. Okay, let's define our xk, xt. It's more constant velocity. Uh, let's assume the continuous time, 
system to start with, then we can discretize with a different uh, sampling time. Okay, this is a PT. This is a P dot T. This become R four, right? The state has. My assumption, my modeling assumption, if I assume constant velocity, that's my model. Okay, you see how I translate a somehow assumption to a model. This model is a linear second order differential equation, so we can write it as a linear system, right? A, B, C, D thing, right? So uh, then I can say x t dot equal to x t dot equal to p t dot p t double dot this is times identity. This is two by two, right? Block. Zero, zero times PT and PT dot. This is my dynamical system, and this is my A matrix. Looks pretty clear, simple, right? Very simple with only here corner have a two by two identity matrix. This is our continuous time system AC. Uh, you should be very familiar now how to do a linearization, especially the simple one, the Euler linearization. So transform to DT, discrete time model, with delta T as my sampling interval, all right? And so it's, you should be able to write it down right away, right? So k plus 1 means the x at time k plus 1 times delta t, right? Equals the previous time location or the state plus the velocity at the previous step, which is x dot, right? This part. This will be uh, 0 i 0 0 x t times delta t. Okay, so that will be, uh, this will be a identity, identity that's plus here, that will be identity times delta t, this is zero times xk, okay? This I call it ad or a, okay? If I call this ac, then this is my a, it's fine. So these are two by two matrices, two by two identity matrix. Hmm. All right. What about uh, <clears throat> measurement? This is my modeling assumption. My assumption could be wrong. You may disagree with my assumption. Okay, that's fine. But this is an assumption we somehow feel it's reasonable to assume that over a few short time that the vehicle doesn't change that much, all right? <clears throat> and uh, the measurement is the distance to the beacons plus some noise, right? So that will be, uh, let's call it YK1, YK2, or YK3, YK4. In this example, we have four beacons. And by definition, this is a nonlinear function of the state now, right? So it is, let's call it H I X K means, so I have to write my output as a function of the state, okay? So the S component of the output is square root, the distance, right? The distance, let's call it this distance. So it only involves X K Xk has two parts, right? R4, the precision part and velocity part. So Sk1, Sk is a vector. Sk1 minus the beacon position B1, the ice beacon position, suppose I do this, squared plus Sk of two, the y coordinate of the of the of the robot position minus the y coordinate of the s beacon squared. Take square root, that's your distance. If my state is here, it's distance from the s beacon. 
And this distance doesn't depend on x3, xk3, and xk4 because that's the velocity. And now we only care about location. So if I define this kind of a notation, then I can say this is nothing but xi of uh, k, x, sorry, x1, x1 of k, x2 of k, h, sorry, h3 of xk, h4 of xk. Function plus some noise. Noise is also, its beacon have different noise. Three, four. Okay, this looks more like a nonlinear function of state now, right? <clears throat> let's let's now let's try to see. Can I use common filter to do the estimation? No, right? Because it's a nonlinear function of state. If it's nonlinear function, it's only nonlinear with respect to control. Then I can do uh, still do the linear common filter case, but it's a nonlinear function of the state. I have to do extended common filter. Okay, uh, for EKF, so we can use we can use the following model. We can use the following model. xk plus one equal to axk. That's our modeling assumption, right? That's axk, that means it doesn't change over time. But I can add some noise term, okay? Indicate that I'm not so sure about things, my modeling assumption. I allow a little bit uncertainty about my modeling assumption, okay? As I mentioned at the very beginning of a common filter, the uh, incorporation of uncertainty is so important. Being arrogant is the most dangerous thing in your life. Okay? Uh, so this is, uh, I will say, noise term can be added to account for deviation from the constant velocity speed assumption. Okay? If you're so sure it doesn't change over time, then I think you'll be wrong, right? And if, as long as you deviate from that assumption a little bit, your estimate will be very, very bad, okay? So uh, yk is h of xk plus v of k, okay? So that's my model. I don't have a control. If I have I mean, control or deterministic control input doesn't affect nature of common future. We can, we can very easily consider that if we have. Or in this case, it's just a uh, uncontrolled autonomous system estimation problem. Okay, now we can do the estimation for x given measurement. Uh, to apply common future, let's let's do one more uh, extended common future. Here, the only nonlinear term. Do I need to do linearization with respect to the state update equation? It's already linear, we don't need to do anything, all right? For the common, extended common filter, we need to do this uh, linearization with respect to the state measurement equation, all right? So that's uh, our fk Okay, our fk we don't need to do linearization or the linearization is trivially given, right? Our fk is just a, and our ck, at any given time, I have a C matrix, should have a C matrix, would be partial h, partial x, evaluate at x hat of k. Okay, uh, should be k plus one given k.
uh, I think, I mean, if that's the k, then I can use this k given minus one, all right? That's the best estimate of your state given all the past history, I want to linearize my measurement around this case, then that will be partial h, how many, how many I mean h is a vector, right, function. So h1 divided by partial x1, uh, partial h1 divided by partial x2, all the way to partial h1, partial x4, and this is x1, x, h, sorry, x, uh, yes. Oh, sorry, I think that's wrong, right? X, that's wrong. The first one is all x1. This is h2, partial x1. This is a partial h4, partial x1. Now it's partial h1, uh, Yes, one partial x two, da da da. Okay, I have a four by four matrix, and I need to evaluate the thing at uh, a particular the best estimate. Okay, once I know this, that's my H K by the way in the formula. Then I can use my derived equation to do the. Just see this equation, right? Prediction is this. Uh, this is the measurement update part of the system. And uh, for the prediction part, I think it's, uh, it's, oh, I summarize here, right? That's the prediction stage. Okay, let's look at the example. Any questions so far? Why we assume constant velocity? We don't know anything, right? So if you, you use the, um, I think, I'm not sure the current, so if you use the app, the navigation app, right? They will locate your car position. So sometimes they ask you to take, I mean, they may ask you to go strict, but if you take the exit at the highway, right? Because the app assume you go through constant speed, all right? You're traveling on a highway, suppose, right? And there's an exit. You all of a sudden take the exit. You go out, and they will still assume you're on the highway. For a few times, eventually they switch, oh, they realize you are there, right? So the behavior of that is just because they assume a somehow constant velocity, or you assume you follow their directions, that their assumption imposes on you, right? So that's the way of using common filter. That's typical assumption to do tracking. Uh, this example is, I, is maybe the only case I'm still using MATLAB here. Okay, I didn't get time to convert it into Python yet. So let's just take MATLAB. I hope everyone is, will like MATLAB better. So this is, uh, let's see, localization example. What I'm doing here, I, I did a simple GUI um, to draw a box. Let's not worry about that first. And here is the beacon position. How many beacons I have? It depends on how many columns I have. So those are beacon position. Each column is the one beacon position, the planner coordinate of its beacons. Okay, that's, you can arbitrarily choose the number of beacons you have. And then I plot them on the figure, suppose I run up to here, hold on. Those are the four beacon positions. Okay, uh, then let's see. Initialize the simulation, let's start initialize the simulation. Uh, those are kind of a setup work and that's my sampling time, all right? So initialize common filter. I also would say extended common filter in this case. Again, I can randomly guess where my location is. X hat is not a true location. 
and uh, uh, I, n equal to four, that means the dimension of the state is four. M is, uh, M is the number of beacons. In this particular case, I have uh, four. This M should be four, okay? Those are initial kind of a covariance matrix. Uh, have a noise variance. So this part is I, I, I'm somehow using the mouse to, to direct where I need to go. Uh, let me run this first. You have some kind of, uh, so if I do start, no, hold on, stop. Let's run it. Uh, this is the initial where I am, okay? If I do start, then my comma filter is estimating, okay? Because the sensor is noisy, so my estimates will never, will always keep moving. <laughs> because each time the measurement I receive has some noise. It keeps changing. And the, this circle, this is the ellipse or ellipsoid, is so-called confidence ellipsoid. In common filter, and because of the common filter level set or confidence is a quadratic function less than something, and if you read my tutorial on geometric linear algebra part, and that's a, how to represent ellipsoid, ellipsoid can be represented as the level set of a quadratic function. If you need to know more of this, I can direct you to the right source of literature. If I use a mouse, then this guy will move, all right? This robot, I can control it. It doesn't need to be constant speed, and I keep tracking it, right? And if I go through this corner, let's click here, it will move to here, you see the ellipsoid, it's like this. Uh, let's do here, join, okay. So what does this mean? Is that you see this, this semi-axis direction. This along this axis is more noisy, or more, my confidence is it's more variance along that direction. Along this direction, I have less variance because of the location of those vehicles that determines my confidence or the uncertainty about the estimate, okay? If I move to here, uh, eventually they will, you see it's almost circle. You see, if I in between of these two things along this direction, the confidence is, uh, is a little bit more or uncertainty is less. Okay, that's the GUI you can play with. I will, I will upload it to the website. Uh, what essentially we are doing is just a few lines of uh, extending common filter. This part doesn't count, okay? I'm just uh, trying to take measurement. The measurement is just the current position of the vehicle, the true position. In reality, you don't have, you don't generate the measurement by yourself. You receive a measurement, okay? Here for testing, we generate the measurement by ourselves. This is the distance between my position and the beacon, and plus some noise. The reason I have square root is because I want to make sure that the noise covariance is what I specified, okay? Uh, here part, this part is, so EKF update. What does this, this function mean? Uh, it's nothing but from here, xk hat, pk to xk plus one hat to p plus one hat, the whole thing, right? The prediction and the I measurement update two step, I group that into one function. That's the essential part of comma, extended comma future. If you look at this EKF update, uh, the, these few lines are just setting up the parameters and the, the essential part is just few lines, okay? And uh, this is, uh, H is the linearization matrix, H, right? If you do the linearization, I can derive the formula, you plug in that formula, and uh, that will be the result. And this is, uh, H without noise is like this. It's the, if you look at the update equation, measure update equation, this part, okay? That means without noise, you assume your measurement should be something, but your measurement tells you something else. That's the surprise term, right? And times the common gain that gives you the uh, best estimate. So this is the exactly, this is common gain. This is the predict plus common gain times the what? The surprise 
then that's it. Okay, that's a, a whole example of the tracking, right? From here, you can do a lot of things, even SLAM. Okay, there's there are different versions of SLAM, and you can use EKF or comma filter type of uh, uh, <coughs> tools to derive SLAM simultaneous localization and mapping. Okay, any questions for this example? Another kind of uh, very important case, common future can be, or extended common future can be used, is to do joint state and the parameter estimation. This is the part I'm going to talk a little bit today as well. So my question is the following. I have a system, suppose for simplicity in this example, I have a system of second order continuous time system, okay? So this correspond to the transfer function is what? Omega n squared, s squared two zeta omega n, uh, s plus omega n squared, standard second order system. Okay? There could be, I mean, those are parameters and the so-called damping ratio and also uh, natural frequency. So if I want to use state space, okay, then I have a state, it's x and, uh, sorry, y and y dot, and the parameter is these two things. Okay, for this square problem, we study the case of Yeah, we still we can we can use least square to estimate it, right? And we didn't consider formally about the measurement noise. Here, I want to say, if I have a linear system, non-linear system, non-linear system, so the parameter is also unknown. This is unknown, and the state is also unknown, right? I can only take a measurement about y. So how do I do the uh, joint state and the parameter estimation? So that's the question I'm going to tell. So let's consider a little bit more general case. And the x dot equal to fx, uh, u, u doesn't matter that much, okay? Theta. Theta in this case is a parameter of your system model. In this case, is this. In this case, it's a linear function of state and control, but, but but in general, let's consider a general case. Plus noise. Okay, that's noise. And y equal to h of x and theta. A u and the theta, u doesn't matter. Uh, v, uh, v of t. Suppose that's my system, and this is a, a system parameter. This is the parameter of your model that you don't know for sure, okay? So the goal is so to use the input up data, input you know, and output you can measure to estimate theta and xt, okay? X and also state. So it's called the joint parameter and state estimation. So if, if parameter is given, you can use this tool to estimate state, right? That's common future or extended common future can do that. But if state is unknown, typically the model is somehow unknown to you, right? Or you need to somehow derive it and you're not certain or you're not sure about the parameter. In so the case, you hope the measurement can also help you can also help you estimate or validate your parameter as well. Okay, so <clears throat> what we can do is that step one, we can view, that's the key, right? We can view parameter theta. So common future is used to do what? State estimation, right? and we can put everything unknown as a state. Okay, we view theta as a state. Okay? It's a constant, why it's a state? 
It doesn't change, but that means it doesn't involve any differential equation, but I can impose artificial differential equation, uh, which is theta dot should be zero, right? That's a differential equation. That's a constant assumption. Plus, as I mentioned, you shouldn't be so sure about your assumption. Plus some process noise, which I call omega theta times t. OK? Is this fine? This will allow your model to modify theta. Otherwise, you're so sure it doesn't change, then it doesn't really evolve. This is a, a artificial, not intelligent, artificial imposed, OK, to, to allow the estimator to modify. the theta value, OK? Or I would say to account for, just like before, to account for deviation. Uh, I think in this case, it's not deviation from constant assumptions. It's indeed a constant in this case. It's just to make sure my estimator can uh, update it, all right? Um, now we have. Now we have a new state, so-called extended state, right? So that new state will be, I would say, approximately as, uh, let's just define it, not approximate. Define it as xt and the theta t. OK, that's my new state vector. State got dimension got increased. Now xt dot equals to, first of all, does, does it depend on the state dimension? Uh, this is Rn, and theta can be one or multi-dimension as well. So that will be my x dot t, which is my vector field, which is f x u and theta. OK, theta is a part of the state, so I can put it here now, right? If I call this x, this is, uh, I don't know how to note this, just, just call it theta is fine. And this part is zero, right? The second part is zero, theta dot is zero, plus some noise, which is the noise associated with x and the noise we superimpose, artificially imposed for theta. And I can call this guy my f tutor x theta u, where is the theta? Theta is here, right? This is x and theta. So this guy is a function of the extended state vector and the input only. And the plus I have omega theta thing, right? That becomes a standard nonlinear uh, vector, uh, dynamical system. And the yt is h x tilde. I can have u as well. And uh, this is my v, uh, v of t. It doesn't change. Which step? Oh, uh, step. Uh, let's call it step two. Oh, uh, no, step one, OK? Step two, uh, now I can do di discretization. Discretization with delta t. Then I have x tilde k plus one equals x k tilde plus f tilde x k tilde u k delta t plus, let's assume we have some noise here. And uh, yk tilde is, no, no, not yk tilde, it's just yk, it's hk tilde u dk. So this will be my nonlinear function discrete time, okay? Nonlinear function here. 
Now I have a standard setup of extended common future that I can use to jointly estimate, to just estimate X K tutor. As K tutor involves data. All right, we're done. So we derive the most general case, then you can use uh, extended comma filter to do it. Uh, for our example, let's go back to the, to the example. Um, for example, uh, today I'm going to assume some simple case. For simplicity, uh, let's assume we somehow know ahead of time, let's assume we know the, uh, the natural frequency we know is one. It's known. The only unknown is what? It's the state and the damping ratio. It's the zeta. So in this case, I will have x1. The state is, uh, is, is what? x should be x1, x2. What else? It's zeta. Okay, it's in R3 now. Two state vector, which is y and y dot, and one parameter, which is unknown, it's zeta. Omega is known, all right? So now we know x dot equal to x1 dot equal to x2, because that's y dot. Any questions? Don't trust my derivation, so you should always question, because I make mistakes all the time. Any questions? This is y, this is y dot, okay? And the x2 dot, which is x2 dot is y double dot, right? If you look at this uh, assumption, y double dot, it's this guy moved to the right. And so if I write it down, will be that's what? Uh, let, let me, let's not do this continuous time. Let's just directly do the uh, discrete time here, okay? That's uh, uh, xk plus one. I'm not sure whether you can see this or not, okay? This is x1, k, plus x2 of k times delta t. My notation has somehow changed. Uh, let me be consistent, that's xk1, xk2, delta t. Let me finish this part, we'll take a break. Then this xk2, uh, the second coordinate is plus, this is the vector field times delta t, right? The vector field now becomes negative omega n squared times x1, which is, uh, this is one, right? So it's, it's xk of one minus two zeta, uh, omega is one, so this is x2, xk of two plus, u times delta t, this is uk, okay? Now this guy, the third one, sorry, this is state, state. It doesn't change, okay? And then plus noise. I'm jumping one step only, okay? I didn't do, I do the linearization already here. This is the velocity times the, 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 the time interval. This is the current, the previous step, location of the state, component two, times the velocity, times the, this. Why is this? It becomes omega n is one. So you look at this part. If you move these two guys to the right, this is the uk, right? Minus two zeta x2. This is x2, right? And uh, minus omega n is one, right? So minus x1. So that's where, so it's minus xk1 minus two z omega, uh, sorry, two zeta xk2 and the plus uk. This whole thing is the velocity, the speed of change of the second coordinate times delta t. Okay, we'll continue 
uh, next lecture. Okay, let's continue. Uh, here's uh, some typo here, right? So this is x tilde. It's the x1, x2 plus the parameter zeta that we want to estimate, okay? Uh, here is x tilde, x tilde as well, but x k2 and x tilde k2 is the same. The only thing that x tilde differs from x is that it has a third component, which is uh, zeta, okay? That's my uh, differential equation, uh, sorry, the, the dynamics. I can call this guy, uh, let's call this guy, is our f, x, k, do I have u? Yes, u, k. Okay, is this nonlinear? No. It's nonlinear, right? Because zeta, I, I should, oh, yeah. uh, this guy should be x tilde, right? x, k, three. So the only nonlinear term is here. All the other terms are linear, right? So it's nonlinear, we have to do in linearization. We have to use extended comma filter. Uh, I think that's easy to do linearization for this one, right? So you can say I have a K, so at any given time, the linearized A matrix, which we call I have K, it's partial f, let's see, partial f, partial f, partial x, okay? And uh, evaluate some uh, best estimate place, right? So, but let's derive this formula first. That will be, it's a three by three matrix, right? It stays in dimension three. So it's partial f1, partial x1, which is, It's one, the only thing related to x. Well, can you see that? I mean, I don't have to write partial x k plus one, right? I mean, that doesn't, this is a function of these two things. The first four few co coordinates, we call it x, right? You can plug in x k or x k plus one, but f is a function of those uh, uh, variables and partial derivative means with respect to, the, to this uh, x, coordinate, uh, x vector. So partial f, partial x2 is delta t. So partial f, partial x3, the first row doesn't involve any x3, so it's zero, okay? So, and uh, partial f2, this second row, x1, so this is negative delta t. Okay, uh, partial, partial F2, partial X2, which uh, uh, I think this is notation, this, uh, this is three, right? Okay, so first of all, I have one here, right? So it's a one minus two X3, X3, let's call it X3 now, okay? I can, let's call it XK3 if you like. X K three times delta t. All right, and then uh, I need to move this further. And the second one is, what about X three? X three only this term, so it will be negative two X two K of two delta t. Okay. Okay, that's my, the third row is zero, zero, one. That's my linearized model. At any given time, linearized A matrix, which we call F here, right? FK change with the state. And we plug in the best estimate at that time to use that to estimate to do the common future. What about Y? Y is linear, right? In this case, in our case, Y is what? One, zero, zero times X, K, theta, right? The only first coordinate because we call this Y, right? You see that? Okay. 
Let's try uh, with examples. Well, what's going on? Uh, what is that? <laughs> Removing previous version. It got restarted. This is the example we covered last time about this common future. Uh, let's look at this extended common future. Joint state parameter estimation. This example, right? Omega n is one, I assume it's one. But zeta here, I can impose anything I want. For example, I can say zeta is 1.5. Uh, this is A matrix. That's my original linear system, okay? I'm trying to, here I'm trying to simulate, uh, I'll say it's a simulate the true system response, okay? So how did I do the simulations? Uh, I have a discrete time. I do my simulation by myself, by the way. So I put in my control for, to generate data, I treat my control as a sinusoidal kind of functions. I give an input. So the output is a linear system. The output should also be sinusoidal. And if I plot it, let's clear out all the cells. Let's uh, run this cell. That's my kind of uh, uh, output. So you, you measure the output, you also know the input, right? For example, if I don't do this, let's say I, uh, let's do a step response. Let's say two times, uh, just two. Okay, that means you have a constant input two, right? You should have a standard kind of uh, linear system response like this, uh, because the last, the last, I mean, I initialized all the y to be zero, so the last one I didn't assign value, so it's still zero. So you don't really look at this part. All right. Um, if I want to say this is uh, uh, not, let's not worry about this. This particular value doesn't matter, right? I, I just simulate up to 1,099, uh, 999, right? Uh, that's be the case. Let's say we have a richer kind of input so that I have a better kind of uh, more data. And then this is part of the state and the parameter joint estimation. Uh, let's see what I have. Zero, that's my initial guess of x hat. Uh, this x hat is my x tilde hat. Okay, that involves x and also zeta, right? That's two, that's three dimension because x is two and plus one, right? That's three dimension. I, I somehow kind of have a process noise. I can artificially impose it. You can tune those numbers later on. And this is third, the third row, third column that correspond to the covariance I impose, artificially impose for the parameter. I'm not sure whether you know what I'm talking about. I, let's go back to the lecture note a little bit. That's uh, this one. Okay, in this example, of course, this is process noise. This is the theta noise, right? And uh, I somehow I want to tune this a little bit smaller, okay, because I, somehow assume this is really constant. Okay, I can make it bigger, it doesn't matter that much. Uh, then I can do the update, only a few lines, just these few lines of code. And this is a prediction step. And uh, the first one I'm doing is what? The F, this is the linearization, right? This is F, compute linearized A matrix, which is 
f here, okay? Uh, this is what? This is this formula. Can you see that? One delta t, zero, an active delta t, those things. And you can see that it's one delta t, negative delta t, one minus two, x three, whatever. Okay, you plug in the best estimate. You see that? You plug in the best estimate at the time. That's my linearized model. Okay, then I can do the prediction. This is the prediction. But how did I do the prediction? It's this according to the model, right? So this is f. I just plug in xk hat at time t. Right, so this should be, I think this would be, uh, uh, I think this would be x k tilde, right? So that's my joint thing. I, I just plug in the best estimate to that formula. I will upload this later. Then update my kind of a covariance. And the measurement update is the same thing. And this h, I don't need to do linearization because h is linear already. And that's how I do it. OK, let's see if I run it. It tracked pretty well. This converts to the third one is what we really want, OK? The third one is somehow convert to 1.5, right? If I change this to a parameter I didn't know, right? So parameter 1.5, this I send to 0.9. I run it again. It somehow converts to 0.9. In this case, somehow it's, it's able to convert. I don't think it's converting exactly to 0.9. Okay, if I zoom in the figure, you may see it's a little bit half steady state error. It's possible. We cannot guarantee anything that converts exactly, but but in this case, it goes roughly in somehow gave you a, a way to converts to a good estimate of the parameter. Okay, with that, I think you have uh, learned everything you need, at least for this class, about common future and extending common future. Okay, any questions so far? I spent a lot of time deriving a T2 probability. I don't think it's necessary to do exercise, but it's necessary for you to go further and deeper to the topic. All right, some people, advanced students may already feel a little bit boring, but I hope, but that's I like. Okay, if you feel boring, that means you understand everything. I think that's kind of important. Uh, <clears throat> you may have heard a lot of other filters, right? Ancient common filter, ensemble common filter, particle filter, even Bayes filter, a lot of those terms. And with our coverage of probability and the way I teach you common filter, you should be able to do all of them. I don't, want to, I don't want to teach you everything about that because we don't have enough time. But the key thing I want you to maybe remember from me is that all this future is based in base estimate. All that cares is your conditional distribution. Okay? Common future is just one special case. The key is to compute conditional distribution. For Gaussian, the distribution is characterized by the mean and the covariance, so we keep them. Then we know everything about distribution. For other distribution, it's not characterized by the mean and the covariance, so you have all different ways to approximate this. Okay, if you know what's going on, those filter, the filters, whatever fancy terms you may see from the textbook or online resources, uh, majority of them are concerned how to compute or estimate or approximate this posterior, the so posterior or so-called conditional distribution. Okay, if you keep that in mind, I think you can uh, do a lot more. But I don't think we have the time to cover all of them. I think that's good enough. Let's jump to the next very important topic, finally.